two, say the man two. Man two. The man two is why we are here. We are telling Larry Krasner, and I'm talking to you, I know you can hear us. We want all of the charges dropped. We don't care what the charges are. We want all charges dropped because resistance, rebellion is our right. It is our duty. It is our responsibility. And we will not stand by and allow our community to be criminalized for resisting these oppressive, racist, white supremacist systems. We got to do a chance for Mamiya, because our main man president back here, I don't know maybe remember, when we went to go with Trust Krasner about the incarceration of Mamiya Abu Jamal, and he asked, who here came, who here came for the release of Mamiya Abu Jamal? And he put a road on us. Here we are, right? Who, 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 who? Brick by brick, wall by wall, we're going to free Mamiya Abu Jamal. Brick by brick, wall by wall.
Young and Larry Krasner. Do y'all know who Pam Africa is? Do we know who Pam Africa is? Yes. I don't know. Larry Krasner compared Pam Africa of the Moo family to Donald Trump because she wouldn't let his dumb ass talk and lie in front of her face. The Krasner is disrespectful and this is the thing, right? Because we know we know about the prisoners that Krasner has helped get released. We know about all of that shit, right? We know about all of that. But the issue is, politicians, once you would give them a break, they do this thing talking about like, oh, it's a process, or I gotta wait, or we gotta see what's going on. The reason why he told us we can't free Mamiya Abu Jamal is essentially because, well, if we free Mamiya, we gotta free a whole bunch of other people. Well, fucking free them then. The fucking issue. Um, so yeah, so, anyway, that was an aside, yeah, but, uh, so 52nd Street, right, um, I'm obviously, um, an organizer, I got a solid support system for the most part, uh, I want to speak, uh, specifically for a brother that got locked up at the same time I did during that time period, because I haven't seen him since, and I don't know if he already or not, um, but, uh, to tell you the story, 52nd Street, I wasn't out there as an organizer, I was out there because some folks said I was going down on 52nd and I came through. Um, not to lead no march or whatever, I was just in solidarity with that block. I live on 56th, this was on 52nd, short walk, right? So, people out there, maybe 20, 20 or so people, uh, people are chilling for the most part. Uh, people are nervous about the amount of police in their neighborhoods. You imagine like these police forces rolling down city halls, Right? And there's room for that shit. It ain't 52nd Street blocks not that big for fucking SWAT trucks to be rolling down. Alright, so imagine what that looked like. You wake up in the morning, you want to go to the grocery store, you walk outside and there's a fucking SWAT truck with a, with a dude on top of the SWAT truck on the turret shooting rubber bullets and uh, gas off. Right? So this is, the, this is the sight that they saw and they were justifiably upset. During this time on 52nd Street, eventually after the pigs were wilding, uh, we, at, this, at first it was the police, then they bought the SWAT and anti-terrorism, then they bought the, uh, the National Guard. So eventually it get real crazy and we like, are we out? During this time period where I'm trying to leave, this brother coming out of nowhere, he wasn't with us the whole time, I promise you. If you can watch any video, he was never out there. He was outside for maybe five minutes. He was listening to music or some shit, he wasn't really paying attention. I was kind of mad and I went to go approach him like, yo, it's crazy right now, you need to get away from this area if they're going to lock up anybody. Right? SWAT team start marching down, they push him with the SWAT shield. Right? He's listening to music, he's not really going here, he's not paying attention. They push him with the SWAT shield. I asked them, yo, can y'all let him go? You don't got nothing to do with what's going on. They grabbed me from the back and slammed me and arrested me. I'm in a police truck. I'm in the police truck. Five minutes later, he coming in. He arrested. I'm talking to him. You know what he told me? I was gonna go get some cigarettes. I was gonna go get some cigarettes. So imagine you in your house and your brother, you with your brother or your father or your son or whatever, and he say, "Hurry, I'll be right back. I'm gonna get some cigarettes." And you don't see him till the next fucking day. You don't know where he is. And people were looking for me and they couldn't find me because police drove me around the back of a car for four hours. And he's screaming, can somebody call my mother or something? Call my sister? When we got out, the charge is so arbitrary, right? And I'm very lucky. The truth of the matter is I'm very lucky because I didn't get no serious charges. But it also shows how arbitrary it is. They told me I was going to be arrested for a whole bunch of dumb shit. Terroristic threats, destruction of public property, X, Y, Z, yada, yada. I get to the fucking police station, they give me the uh, curfew violation charge the fucking citation. So they booked me for no reason and then let me out in the morning while during the period where I could get arrested again for the citation, the same citation. And during this time period, I have no idea what happened to this other brother. He don't got nobody to call. He had no phone with him. And people are getting kidnapped in the middle of the night and nobody knows what happened to their family. This shit is unacceptable. So, Anybody in a more serious situation than I am, anybody that got more serious charges, we have to demand that they get freed immediately. And all the charges need to be dropped immediately.
And I don't know what the fuck President talking about. Listen, man, if you ain't hurt nobody, if it ain't a assault charge, sexual or physical or otherwise, exactly. I don't care if you was, I don't give a fuck if you sold a brick. Exactly. They do not belong in prison. They do not belong in prison. Right. Let them all go. There's a lot of concern about our usage, our, our uses of the word political prisoners. The people that got arrested on 52nd Street and anybody that was involved in the uprising, they are political prisoners. They are political prisoners. So we say free the mob, Mamiya will want them free as well. Mamiya has always said the movement for free Mamiya was never only about him. It was about all political prisoners and all people that stand against injustice. So, when we say free my men, when we say free your mob, we talk about these boys and these girls and their kids on these blocks getting arrested for the most ridiculous reasons. And they don't got to be at every Black Lives Matter march. They don't got to be at every action or organizing committee. The fact that they are alive and they deserve to be free and they are not make them political prisoners. Free them all! What's the call? 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 What's the call?